Hello and welcome to another video. So in this extremely short video, we'll be talking about the Extreme Valid Theorem and Fermat's Theorem. So this is not to be confused with Fermat's Last Theorem, which is a whole other beast. So this is Fermat's Theorem. This is not Fermat's Last Theorem. So just, just to clear that up. Okay. So let's talk about what the extreme value term is first. So I'll write down the, so let me just kind of write that down. So the extreme value theorem. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down the definition. So the, the definition might sound a bit scary at first, but it's not actually that bad once you do a few kind of visuals about what this actually means. So let's go ahead and write that definition. Excuse me. So if f of x is a continuous function on a closed interval from a to b, so this this includes a and b because it's a closed interval. So just to be very clear about that. Then f, so, so then f of x attains a maximum. So just to be very clear. So we're just going to rewrite this a little bit. So it attains an absolute maximum value f of c and an absolute minimum so minimum f of a at some numbers now just to be clear just some real numbers so c and d in the real numbers in the closed interval a to b and this could include the endpoint. So could include endpoints. Okay, now this might seem a, this might look like a very long statement, but essentially what this is saying that if I have some kind of graph and it's over a closed interval, there's always going to be a maximum and a minimum somewhere in that graph, and it could happen at the endpoints as well. So that's all the extreme value theorem is saying. There's absolutely nothing special going on here. So just to kind of give a sense of what this exactly is and how can we do a few and kind of how we can visualize this, let's do a few examples very quickly just to kind of give a sense of what's going on. So for, for all of these examples, I'll be just doing a very quick plot of what's going on. So here's the first example. And in fact, uh, I'll combine all of these examples into one kind of part. So suppose I have to close in a row from E to B of this uh, of this particular graph right here. So this right here is A. This right there is C. This right there is D. And this right there, just to gonna extend out of it, that's going to be B. That's the x-axis and that's the y-axis. So x equals C is the absolute... maximum because we, we can very clearly see here that this is the highest point in the graph and x equals d is the absolute minimum because as you can very clearly see once again oh just to be very clear uh, i'm just going to i'm just going to fix this graph a little bit so that's like here then something like that just to be very uh, just to be very explicit what's going on there and then we can see for uh, x equals d it's the lowest part of the graph. So on the closed interval from E to E, because we have we don't have we don't have open dots, we have closed dots. We can see that there's always an absolute maximum and a minimum. Okay, let's kind of do another example just to kind of give a sense of what's going on here. Another example. So let's run another axis. Okay. So let's go ahead and draw this graph instead. Okay, so in this situation, we notice that, so let's call this A, let's call this C, and let's call this D. 
or B rather. Okay, so in this situation, we notice that x equals c is an absolute maximum. And then at x equals b, we notice that this is an absolute minimum. And, oh, just to be very clear as to what's going on here. I, feel, I realize this is really bad drawing, so let's just be very clear. That should be a bit more explicit. Okay. There we go. Okay, so x equals b is an absolute minimum in this situation. Once again, just to be very clear, at x equals c, we have the highest point of the graph. At x equals b, we have the lowest point of the graph. So naturally, those are the maximums and minimums. Okay, so not, uh, not all graphs are going to look like this. So let's to kind of illustrate the continuity portion of this proof of, the, of this theorem. Let's go ahead and draw this graph a little bit. Okay, so let's do the next example. This one is a bit unusual. So let's go ahead and draw the next graph. Okay, so this graph is going to look something like this. So there's an, there's an open, there's a closed dot here, but then there's an open dot here. There's a, let's just be very clear here, that's an open dot. And then right here, there is a closed dot, which is directly below this kind of part. So there's a jump to this continuity at this point. And then right here, this is where it ends. Okay, so let's, just, let's get some numbers here, just very explicit. So this is one, this is a three. So this is here three, this is at one, and then this directly goes down. And then let's see, this point right there, that's a one. So this all happens at x equals one. And then this right there, that's two, and that's the x-axis, and that's the y-axis. Okay, now in this situation, well, let's take a look at this. x equals two is an absolute minimum. So nothing too crazy here, but the, the, there's a problem here though. There is no absolute maximum. I mean, you could argue that this is an absolute maximum, but the problem is that the function isn't continuous. So because the function is continuous, I mean, you could say like, oh, this is getting, this is bigger and bigger. But then the problem is that as it approaches one, it doesn't really tend to any value. It kind of just has a jump or whatever. So because there's a jump, you can't really say there's a maximum or a minimum because from the left, it's approaching a certain value, but from the right, it's approaching a different value. So there is no fixed value at x equals 1. And because there's no fixed value, you can't definitely say that there's a maximum or a minimum. So no maximum at x equals 1. And more appropriately, there's no extrema at x equals 1. So there could have been a minimum as well, but I mean, that's clearly not, that's clearly not the case here. But my point is, is that in this situation, there is no maximum at x equals 1 because you, you can't say that. And in general, it's, it's not even x equals 1. There is no maximum at all because we can't say that the, the function is a continuous at x equals 1. So as a result, we can't say that there's a maximum of any kind here. Okay, and to kind of build on this topic let's do one more example so this emphasizes why the function needs to be continuous because otherwise it's you can't really say there's a maximum or minimum because uh, because because otherwise uh, you can very clearly see that there is no fixed value at a certain point it just kind of jumps so the values are different so you can't really conclude there's a maximum or a minimum at any kind of point okay let's do another one so this is a um this is the y value of one there's a vertical asymptote right here. So once again, the function isn't continuous at x equals two. So it just keeps going up and up and up. So that's the x value and that's the y value. So this time we don't even have a maximum or a minimum at, in, at all. And the reason for that is because, well, for there to be a minimum, it has to be continuous. And the reason it has to be continuous is because, well, if this point was defined, then we could definitely conclude that this is the, max, the minimum. But the problem is that any point above that isn't the lowest value on the curve on the graph, so that's not really a minimum per se. And there is no max miter because I just keep going up and up and up and up forever because there's an asymptote here. So there is no finite bound to this curve right here. So as a, as a result, there is no maximum either. So no max or min since 
f of x is not continuous. So once again, like I could keep going up and up and up forever, so there is no maximum. And then if I went down, well, this point is undefined. So I would have to actually be able to tell what's going on around that point in order to conclusively say that there's a minimum, but I can't. So as a result, I can't really conclude there's a minimum or whatever. So that takes care of the extreme value theorem. So there's nothing too weird about it. All it takes about are maximums and minimums across a closed interval, provided the function is continuous, of course. That's an uh, important caveat we have to be aware of. Okay, so the next one we're going to talk about is Fermat's theorem. So once again, this is not to be confused with Fermat's last, last theorem, which is very different and, uh, and beyond the scope of this course. So let's talk about this one. So Fermat's theorem. Okay, so this one is particularly simple, and in fact, this one is so simple, I'll only do one example on this, because there isn't really too much to talk about here. This one says, if f of x has a local maxima, or maximum rather, I guess, or minimum at x equals c, where c is a real number, and if f prime of c exists, then f prime of c equals zero. Now, careful. You gotta be you, now. Just let's go over what we talked about. So, if f of x has a local maximum or minimum, then f prime of c is zero. But you gotta be careful. The opposite is not true. So you can't say that if the derivative is zero at a particular point, that there's a local maximum minimum. For example, consider a graph. So let's just say, let's just kind of write that down in red because I want to be very explicit about that. The converse is not true. And when I say the word converse, converse just means the opposite. So the opposite is not true. So when I say, if I were to say f prime of c equals zero, that doesn't imply there's local maximum or minimum. So let's kind of talk about this important distinction right here. Okay, so for example, suppose I give you the graph or the function. Suppose I tell you that f of x equals x cubed. The derivative of this function is equal to 3x squared. And the problem is that if I were to put if I were the if I were to kind of plot this function, it looks something like that. So if there's a look now let's take a now let's take a look at what Fermat's theorem says. It says if f of x has a local maximum or minimum at x equals c and f prime of c exists, then f prime of c equals zero. So there is some number for which this number is, for which the derivative is zero. Well, we know what that is. We know that f prime of zero is equal to zero, but is zero a local maximum or minimum? No, it's not. And that's just because of what we talked about in the last video. In this, uh, for there to be a maximum or minimum, well, we talked about it in the last video and we, we realized that there wasn't a maximum or a minimum at zero. So Fermat's law theorem does not tell you that there is a local maximum or minimum if the derivative is zero. It just tells you if there was a local maximum or minimum, then the derivative has zero. But the opposite isn't true. So just to be very explicit what I'm saying right here, if the derivative is zero, that does not imply a local maximum or a minimum. However, if there is a local maximum or minimum at a point, then the derivative has to be zero. We have to use other tests to, in order to determine what's going on around that point. So just to be very, just to be, just to be very explicit right here, Fermat's theorem uh, tells us we may potentially. So let me just capitalize that. So potentially. have a maximum or a minimum when f prime of c is equal to zero. 
So just to be very explicit, so just to be very clear right here, that's that's really important. Fermat's theorem does not tell us that if the derivative is zero, there's a maximum or minimum. It tells you that if there is a local maximum or minimum, then the derivative has to be zero. So just, just to make that very important distinction. So we can talk about the idea of how to actually find a maximum or a minimum using the concept of critical numbers. And that is something I'll discuss in the next video. So once again, I did mention this is a very short video. So I will talk about the concept of critical numbers in the next video. But otherwise, if you have any questions or concerns, just leave me know in the comments. I'll be happy to answer. But if this video helped you, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will really appreciate that. Thank you all so much.